to speak is very easy to stay without speaking stay silent is quite difficult but once we taste what is it the after effects of being silent once we taste that we will know that silence is golden so what should we do my duty now is to give you some hints so that you will be trained in such a way you will master communication in the end i am going to tell you about a person who really mastered communication he is called the master of communication so be trained in communication to master it speaking and silence both are effective see very often we think that silence is golden true it is golden but speaking is also very effective um then we need to strike a balance between speaking and being silent we need to know to do it simultaneously when to speak when not to speak there is time for everyone to speak at the appropriate time and also to be silent at the appropriate time now the main thing when we are speaking how is the words coming always we keep blaming the strongest muscle without bone in our body that it is doing either it is powerful or it is problematic right i am talking about the tongue we keep on blaming it but the speech the word god divine uh, gift given by god where is it coming from either it is coming from our brain or it is coming from the heart i always think god is so wise you know last time when i was speaking we are fearfully and wonderfully made yes we are made in such a way we when we are speaking we need to combine our thought and combine our feeling both mix together and use it at the appropriate time that is the main just what i am going to speak to you so let me start with a small little prayer which will be helpful not only for us now to start this one but it will be very helpful as we start the day every day lord god give us the courage to speak lord god give us the courage not to speak give us the wisdom to discern them both help us to speak or to stay say stay silent at the appropriate time beautiful prayer i started doing this one this prayer god really helps us he gives us courage to speak he also gives us courage to stay silent i'm going to give you a short introduction as i told you the a b c of communication and finally that is the major thing to discern when to speak when not to speak how to get that wisdom there is time to speak and there is a time not to speak that is our main focus today before going into the subject let me give you a brief introduction about the a b c of communication as i told you communication is a wide topic so what is communication a certain the importance of communication that is a who is my audience where is my audience what are the needs of my audience these are the three questions we need to keep asking when we are communicating to a person so the major thing is it should be not a sender oriented communication 
it should be receiver oriented communication so what i need to keep in mind is who is the audience to whom i am going to address today and where is he i will not go into the technical details i think you will understand where is he whether he is a city dweller which country he lives what is his custom what are the needs of the audience based on the needs if you start the conversation communication becomes very effective the b of communication is be a good listener we have listened already in the first uh, part of communication part 1 already we have listened a good listener will be a good communicator so when it is coming when we need to be silent i am going to explain that in a detailed way and also we need to cultivate the c is is we need to cultivate relevant body language our eye contact our body movements so the last one the d part of it is discern when to speak and when not to speak in the bible we see in ecclesiastes verse the chapter 3 verse 7 says there is time for everything in the same way there is a time when you need to speak and there is a time you need to be silent okay what is communication communication is from the the root word communication is taken from a latin word which goes like this communis communis is the root word of communication so from that root word communication common community communion so many words have cropped up so what is communication in simple words if i need to explain to you when you have something in common your communication is beautiful so that is what i told you we you need to understand the receiver oriented communication if you know your audience and what are the needs of the audience you start from the need of the audience and not from what i know if i know so much in communication it doesn't mean that i must come and tell everything to you according to the need of the audience we communicate so what is communication communication boils down to the fact that communication is just relationship that is why when the relationship is good it is very easy to communicate when the relationship is bad so difficult just one hour back one husband and wife they were sitting in our room for counseling and both were not talking to each other the why the relationship there is some problem in the relationship they both have come together in the car and both are sitting in the room one hour i spoke to them they spoke to me and they are speaking to each other through me that is what happens no in the family when relationship breaks down communication automatically breaks down so that is communication so communication boils down to something common and communication is nothing but communication is relationship so what is communication what is not communication we cannot but communicate that means everything is communication nothing you can say that is not communication you speak or you don't speak you are communicating you do something or you don't do anything you are still communicating your actions and your reaction it communicates you con consciously communicate and you unconsciously communicate and silence is also communication so everything your body language how you sit how your hand hands are moving everything is communication so what is not communication cannot be defined whether you do something whether you say something whether you don't do anything it is communication if communication everything is communication it needs to be learnt practiced and you need to be trained in communication but what happens very often people are not trained in communication we teach them to talk 
we don't teach them what to talk and how to talk and when to talk. That is why relationships are either relationships, you can bridge the relationship or you can break the relationship. Relationships are created or it is crashed all because of communication. The power of communication is so great, it can be powerful or problematic. If you, when you communicate, you can either be a very powerful person. Proverbs 18, 21 says like this, the power of life and death are in communication. Amazing. So whatever we speak, if communication is so important, it creates or crashes relationship. It builds or it is breaking the relationship. So why not we master communication? Communication, if you are able to speak or you are able not to speak, you are able to build trust. The opposite is communication becomes problematic. It creates doubt. Either it provides clarity and direction, otherwise it brings in confusion. If communication is powerful, understanding is great. If communication becomes a problematic, misunderstanding takes place. So communication is when I speak, I want people to understand what I speak. The content part of it is what is said. How I say it is the method I use it. The content is important. The method is important. And when I say it is very, very important. Now what we are going to concentrate when, when we need to say something, when we need to stay silent. So whatever I speak now, if you group them into three different categories, I think you have already heard that percentage. What the content, the persons or people, the listeners are influenced only by 7% by the content of it. But the tone, the voice modulation, when I speak, whether I'm speaking from my heart or it is just my brain transferring from my brain, everything works out only 38%. It influences the audience 38%. So what happens to the 55% of the remaining part? It is only the way, how I look or how I act, my body language, kinesics. See, these are the three major things, but Above all these three major things, there is something which masters everything. That is when I communicate. What is said needs to correspond with how I say it and when I say it. I repeat it again. What is said needs to correspond with, coincide with how I say it and when I say it. That is where the problem comes. Many of us know what to talk. Many of us know the content part of it. The problem is coming, how to say it. Whether you must use only your brain or whether you must use your heart. There are four types of communication. One is head-to-head -head communication. Head-to-head -head communication, I have done communication, that is my interest. So whoever is listening, I will come and tell everything what I have learned for three years or five years and mastered in it. That is head-to-head -head communication. That is what happens, you know, in the beginning when we had started uh, our profession as a professor or a teacher, we love to tell people all that we know. That is head-to-head -head communication. Head-to-head -head communication is knowledge. Knowledge is very important, but never stop with it. There is second type of communication, heart-to-heart -heart communication. 
all your feelings, how you feel about it. You have experienced something when you are speaking or when you are not speaking, you have experienced something. So you want to come and tell all your feelings to others. That is heart to heart communication. The third one is soul to soul communication. It is combination of your head knowledge and your heart experience. See, I'll tell you, Mahatma Gandhi, <coughs> Sorry, he was known as Mahatma, not because of anything. He was simple and he was practical, right? A lady came to Mahatma Gandhi and asked him, sir, my child is eating a lot of sweets. I want you to give her some advice so that she will stop eating. And uh, Mahatma Gandhi thought for a while and he told, um, you bring her after 10 days. The mother took her back and brought her after 10 days. Mahatma Gandhi took the small child, kept her on the lap and told, child, I tell you, please don't eat sweets. This mother was so very annoyed and she told, you asked me to take the child back and after 10 days I brought her from such a long distance and you could have said the same thing before. Then Mahatma Gandhi sent the child out and told the mother, Ma'am, 10 days back, I was addicted to sweets. I was eating sweets. So I was not able to tell it from my head. If I tell it from my head, child will understand. I was not able to tell it from my, I was able to tell it through my head, not through my heart. Now I thought, whatever I know, let me practice it and then come and tell it to you. That is soul to soul communication. There is one more communication, which is spirit to spirit communication. That is divine communication, which is an amazing thing. If we are missing that divine communication, we'll have a separate separate uh, time, we'll talk about the divine communication. Now, let me switch on to, to speak or not to speak. I've given enough introduction. Now you would have understand, understood what is communication. So communication should be soul to soul, the best communication. What I have learned and what I have experienced is soul to soul communication. It is good to know everything. Knowledge is good, but knowledge without practice is, will not be an effective communication. It can be in your personal life. It can be your official life. It can be your family life. It can be intrapersonal communication. Intrapersonal is talking to yourself. It can be interpersonal communication, group communication, public communication, name anything. Soul to soul communication is an amazing thing, which I have tried it for many, many years people will listen to you. People want something, uh, a relation, something to listen so that their relationship will become stronger. So soul to soul communication, if you can practice it, then when you are talking, you know when to speak, when not to speak. The wisest man in the Bible, Solomon, says so many things about communication. He talks so much about communication. He says, if you are not, if you are talking too much, you are sinning. If you are not talking, if you are staying silent, even if you are ignorant, people will consider you are wise. So communication is a powerful tool. There is time to keep silent. There is a time to speak. See, when children are growing up, even us, we train ourselves to do certain things as soon as we get up. And we schedule your, our timing. How is that? We fail to schedule our time to speak and our time not to speak. I'll tell you why. Because it is so very integrated. Speaking and being silent are integrated so much, it is very difficult to separate them. Fitly spoken word. Fitly spoken words are relevant, well, relevant words <coughs> said at the appropriate time. 
I am very sorry today being the teacher's day. I am speaking from morning, so you must excuse me when I am coughing a bit. So, fitly spoken word is relevant words said at the appropriate time. And prudent keep silent at the evil time. I am quoting everything from the Bible. So, if you are a prudent person, you know when to be silent. A wife was not talking to the husband for a long time. The husband got a uh, little worried, you know, newly, uh, newly married. So he went and told uh, his friend in the office, my wife is not talking for the last uh, two days. You know what the uh, other man told out of his experience? Maybe she is trying to tell you something. Silence speaks louder than words. See, I'm going to talk to you both about how, when to speak up, when not to speak. I have chosen when not to speak to bring it in the beginning and then go into when to speak because we all know when to speak. Most of us, 90% of us, we know when to speak. The problem comes, we do not know when we should not speak. Okay, the first one, silence speaks louder than words. When? It is not always. Sometimes I'll tell you these husbands or wives also, let me not blame husbands only, wives also, when they want to irritate the other party, they keep silent. I'm not talking about that silent. Silence speaks louder than words. So when you are emotionally disturbed, when others are going through some deep sorrow, Either you are disturbed or somebody else is going through deep sorrow. Silence speaks louder than words. When you are very anxious, when you are angry, when you are extremely happy, this we never think. When we are extremely happy, we make so many promises, right? This morning, this evening, somebody was talking to me, husband and wife. She was telling me, when he got married, he gave me so many promises. Nothing he has kept. We all hear that. See, when you are very, very happy, emotionally we are not balanced. Emotionally, either you are disturbed or you, you are in high spirit. Emotionally, you are very happy. Don't make any promises. Heart, your head and your heart. So mouth is kept at the correct place, right? Consult, let whatever thought comes to you, let it go to your heart and from heart, let the words come out so that when you speak, it is from the abundance of heart, your mouth speaks. So when somebody is going through some terrible problem, there is no need for us to go there and tell God is good. God is with you. He will never make mistakes. These things will irritate them. They know God is good. They know whatever is happening, God will not make. That is not what they want to hear. Maybe you just hold their hands. I lost my father when I was 10 years old. I lost my only brother in an accident when I was 18. My mother, the strongest woman in the world, she has brought me to this far, no? She just held my hand. She never spoke. Till today, I think that is the best thing you can do when you go somewhere. Sometimes we think that even when we are emotionally disturbed, when others are disturbed, we think, if I am quiet, what will people think of me? No, there are times when we need to be quiet, especially when we are anxious about anything, when we are angry, or when we are extreme happy. We have seen this political parties, you know, when they want to vote, they come and tell, we will do this for you, that for you, because they were so very highly um, in that high mood of happiness, thinking that they will come to the, um, they will get the position and they promise you so many things. Same thing happens in our lives also. So that is the first thing. The second one. When silence is golden, when silence speaks louder than words, when you are unsure of what to say, 
and you yourself are confused about your own feeling concerning any matter wait till you become sure it is not that you should not talk give yourself time if you don't have something nice to say it is better you don't say anything so when you are confused second one when you are confused don't talk when you are anxious angry deeply you are happy don't talk second one unsure what to say please do not talk the third one a challenging situation we all face no so much of challenging now no need to tell because of this covid 19 along with covid 19 there are so many challenges monetary problem family problem sickness problem there are so many other things which have which has cropped up i tell you i i been doing counseling for so many years from 2007 i am counseling in the evenings i have given my time i am honestly telling i have never ever got so many people coming for counseling during this covid time people are going through fear anxiety there are so many things people are going challenging time is challenging do not use silence to frustrate the other person and also we should not be silent just uh, uh, to impress others but we if we are going through a challenging situation think before talking and it is not good to talk and then think think and talk and not talk and think right words one said we all know communication very powerful very important whether you say or you don't say you keep saying something consciously or unconsciously you tell something so if you are in a challenging situation i feel it is better for us to be silent think for a while it is not harmful to stay silent when an important narration or an incident is shared please be a good listener see very often what happens you know when people are talking in half of the sentence only our mind wanders how we can answer them so when an important narr a narration is given or an incident is shared you make people think that they've been heard by our silent nodding and also sincere eye contact body lang language kinesics so body language is very very important so don't simply sit there without any emotion then they don't feel like sharing anything with us a good listener is an effective communicator and body languages talks louder than your words so the fifth one fifth one when i need to be silent during discussions especially official and also in family matters when discussions are taking place and we are negotiating an issue silence make silence your best friend say your part whatever we need to say when we say our part then be silent and let other person come to their own conclusion very often what we do we do not we have something in mind our own view we don't allow others to take any decisions our, our silence shows the other person that we are confident in what we have just said very often we keep talking after giving our opinion we don't allow others to talk that shows that means you are not confident of what you have already said if you are confident of what you have said you will be silent and also we respect the other person when we are allowing them to talk never push your thought 
so the fifth time when you are silent never push your thoughts and never force a person to make decision very often very very often between husband and wife the strongest person right the meekest person never makes any decision whatever the wife says the husband listens or whatever the husband says a wife listens it goes to certain extent when it reaches certain level it is difficult for them so silence is golden again when a person is not ready to hear what you say you need to be silent silence talks louder than words so if your partner is not ready to hear you would have decided but your partner is not ready quite often the other person is in a position not to hear anything what you are going to say it may be your partner it can be your friend or it can be your business partner also they want us to listen to their problems see people feel so comfortable when they are able to come and share their problem so wait for the appropriate time as we have seen already there is time to speak there is time to be silent so practice patience to listen to the full thing what the person wants to say we have heard very often no we have to yes so double you need to hear double before you speak half of it let every person be quick to hear and slow to speak so when we are quick to hear when we give our ears uh, to the other person what he they are saying it becomes easy for us uh, to understand them so finally what can i say we, we learn so many things if we are silent wise men you would have heard this quotation wise men talk because they have something to say fools talk because they have to say something let us not be fools let us be wise people if you have something to say please say it silence and can keep us from sinning it gains uh, gives us respect and it we are also considered to be wise and intelligent if we are silent then you can think that that means there is no time for me to speak at all no we have to there is time to speak time to speak loud and clear but when you are speaking loud and clear i'll come to the second part when we need to speak when we need to speak when we need to speak please speak be very clear be very specific loud and clear but your talk should be integrated with two things one is truth the other one is love truth if you are speaking the truth nothing but the truth truth i will speak the truth and nothing but the truth without hurting the other person so truth when you are speaking you will speak with authority and there will be in your communication people will listen there will be genuineness we think that when we are not speaking truth we are fooling people people are not fools they understand whether you are speaking from your head or you are speaking from your heart right so whether it is your heart to heart communication or it is your soul to soul communication whatever you are speaking she has a good knowledge he has a good knowledge about it and she knows what she is speaking he knows what he is speaking so there is integrity there is a reliability so speak the truth and nothing but the truth but truth should be spoken with love you feel with the person and speak not sympathizing empathizing sympathizing is i feel for the person you we are not feeling for the person if we feel for the person we cannot speak the truth you feel with the person suppose i am in her place how will i feel so 
when you need to speak, speak loud and clear. When you are speaking loud and clear, please remember, speak the truth and speak the truth in love, with empathy, feeling with the person. That is soul-to-soul -soul communication. Truth is your thought. Love is from your heart. So God has kept the mouth in the correct place. Combine your thought. Combine the truth. Whatever is true, logically you are thinking, your knowledge, bring it to your heart and let the heart speak. That is why sometimes when we are speaking, people ask, oh, you don't have a heart at all? How is that you are speaking like this? That means they are speaking the truth, but without love. Okay, the first one, when we need to speak, when our feelings, when your feelings are being trampled, things go out of control, please speak up. My mother always says, when we go through some kind of challenges in the family, you do to speak when not to speak. Because you are quiet when others are pulling you down, that is why people are taking advantage of you. Very true. In many, many, many families, it is very true. When your feelings are being trampled, please speak. But when you are speaking, be very careful. Do not talk what your tongue says, but let your tongue speak what you want to say. Hope I'm not confusing you. It simply means have control over your words. You need to speak up. When you need to speak, it needs to be truth combined with integrated. It is not coated with love, integrated with love. But when you are speaking with the truth with love, Control your words. Let not your tongue speak what the tongue wants. Very often in Tamil they say, no, the tongue doesn't have bones, no. It can bend any way it wants. No, that is not the way. Even if you are speaking for yourself or you are speaking for others, you need to have control over your tongue. You must have control over the words. How can you do that? You need to combine your logic with your feeling. If you are too emotional, don't speak. Wait for some time. Do something. You count from 10 to 1 backwards or anything you do or move out from that place or stay quiet. But when you need to speak, speak it out, speak the truth with love. Let your tongue be controlled, control over your words. The second thing, express the feelings clearly to let others know what you value. This is what I failed to do for many years. Now I know. I've learned it very late, but never too late. I can teach others. I have learned it from my mistakes. So I'm able to teach to you. Now I'm able to stand. I'm able to teach others. Express your feelings clearly. Let others know what you value. When people know what you value, they become quiet. Self-love is not wrong, ma. Selfish love is sinful. Self-love is not wrong at all. Otherwise, God would not have told, love others as yourself. Only when you know how to love yourself, you will be in a position to love others. I always did everything for my husband. I always did everything for my children, my mother, my brother, my sisters, everyone I did. I never thought about myself. God is asking us to take care of ourselves. We all love learn from mistakes. So speak up for yourself. Self-love is not at all wrong. Selfish love, let them go anyway. I will want my way. That is wrong. That is selfish love. Not only speak for yourself, there are people who cannot talk. That is where I came in contact with Lata. I really honor her. 
right she, she is speaking for so many people she has such great uh, um, responsibility i am not able to manage i wonder how she manages all these things so speak up for yourself and speak up for others our voice may be the only thing that will save and protect us from harm and also others from harm let me go a little fast then third one speak up when you when you see some wrong doing because silence could be seen as an agreement very very often i have a wonderful friend that is why we need to move with people who are able to speak when they need to speak who are silent when they are silent when we are together we are also naturally we are trained okay when we pass us on the road if she says water is coming out of the a uh, tap and they have not closed it she will go into that house she will talk to them and she will tell them and come it's not only that any wrong doings when she sees she is not able to be quiet so when you see something wrong being done to you or to others do not be silent because your silence will be considered as your agreement so the fourth one when you are asked for your opinion oh my goodness that is a beautiful thing this is what i have learned i never speak wait for my turn when you are asked for your opinion speak it out clear and loud speak the truth speak your values speak everything what you are feeling people will listen people will value it fifth one when you have a valuable contribution to make please do not be silent people may not ask you sometimes people may not ask you but you have a valuable suggestion you have something valuable to say do not be silent speak it out giving solution this is an amazing thing they i have 63 children many of them are youth they come all the time what i don't like to hear is complaints you have seen children right and youth especially all the time they will have one complaint or the other from morning early morning till evening now what i have done for our home from morning 6 to 8 nobody should talk so after 8 o'clock when they come and line up full criticism she did that to me she did this to me i thought it is only with this type of children it is also in the college where we are working right all the time you go and sit half an hour before the class starts you will listen 101 criticism so i have come out with one beautiful thing anybody can come and give their criticism please come but come with a solution and the solution should be practical oh this works out beautiful none of them will come because none of them want to have solution they simply want to criticize it happens in our uh, uh, people also bigger people grown ups also the gossip right if people are doing something wrong you see it with your eyes why don't you have some solution for them or keep your mouth shut criticism instead of criticizing give solutions i put it in my office room no criticism criticism can be given only with a solution they are dying to criticize okay criticize i will listen because you cannot uh, send them out you know you send one out two will come inside with other criticism okay come criticize you can criticize but give a solution do not be quick to judge think of a solution i also tell them if they are coming for the second time this is only for the bigger boys like 24 25 and they come with a lot of criticism i tell them you have a suggestion right now they are very clever when they are coming only they'll come with a solution i tell them go second time when they come i tell them go and try it out and then come and voice it no criticism so think positive talk positive 
So when you think positive, you can boost so many people. I can give you a lot of illustrations because of time I'm not giving. See, life will be transformed. The other day I went to the ATM to take money and none were there, everybody wearing mask and standing in the line. That man who was inside was taking a long time uh, to come out. Then I just peeped through and told, oh, you are inside, I went outside. Then he told, ma'am, ma'am, please come, please come. I got a little worried, you know. Why is this man asking me to come? And I was standing outside. He took the money and came. Then I was, uh, I went inside and I was uh, taking the money. As I was taking in, he peeped in and he told, ma'am, what did you say? I told, no, I just told oh, this ATM is working. So let me, uh, ma'am, I never heard anything good from morning. At least you told, I didn't tell anything. I just murmured, okay, this ATM is working, let me. So people are, so he was so very happy. He stood, he thanked me and then went. People are longing to hear. So be positive. Use relevant words. But when we are positive, sometimes we are exaggerating. So let us not exaggerate. Be positive, but speak the truth. Speak the truth in love. So we have come to the last part. Silence is good. Speaking up is good. So your head knowledge is good. Your heart experience is good. Two H's are very important for communication. Two H's, easy to remember. Your head and your heart is very important. What I am trying to do, all that I know, I will bring it to my heart and I will combine it with my experience and empathy and then speak. You will be thinking it is very difficult. Who will think so many things? Try it and see. One step at a time. Take, make a simple decision. Simple decision and follow it in an easy way. You are, you will become a victor. If I have become overcome, I won't say I've mastered communication. At least I am in the process of mastering communication. So, when you are thinking of two H's, that is your head and your heart, and you are able to combine everything, you will not be judgmental. You will be non-judgmental. You will not be negative. You will be positive. You will not be complaining. You will be giving solutions. You will not give excuses, but you will give reasonable explanations. You will not exaggerate, but you will speak the truth in love. And you will not be doubtful. Matic. You will say, okay, what I am saying is right and you must do it. No, you will be flexible. You will not gossip. You will never talk about anyone when they are not there. If you need to talk, you will talk it in front of them. We are coming to the final one. Oh, amazing it is. How can I be such a person? Can I be such a person? Yes, there is a person who is called the master communicator in the Gospel of John, 7th chapter, I think it is 46, 47 words. It says, the officer said, no man spoke like him. That is Jesus Christ. We learn from him, his way of talking. He knew when to talk, when he talked, he spoke with authority. He spoke the truth. He spoke the truth with empathy. So how can I be such a person? First one, laminate your communication. Lamination, we all know what is lamination, right? But we do not know how to laminate our communication. Laminate your communication. How to laminate? Protect your communication. Guard your communication. King David, the amazing king in the Old Testament, in the Bible we read, he is praying, Lord, put a guard to my mouth, put a lock to my mouth that I will not speak the unwanted thing. Let it be our prayer. Laminate communication. What you speak, laminate it. 
the second l load your heart and your head with the excellent things there are so many things which are excellent think of the true things think of noble things think of just a pure lovely good report virtue something of praise think on these things your head load it your heart load it when it comes out only the positive only the good will come now you know why we are not able to talk properly because your heart is deceitful my heart is deceitful i think when i think of the other person think good of the other person don't be critical don't be judgmental even they have 50 to 60 percent weakness take it as a challenge god has given you that person to live talk about the 40 person try and see whether you can change nothing is impossible the second l load your head load your heart with excellent thing there are amazing things in this world the world is beautiful god has created a beautiful world concentrate on the excellent thing if your heart is excellent words will be excellent if your heart is positive positive will be if your heart is thinking of success success will come out of your mouth so fill your heart the third l is i'm giving you three l's the third l is learn from your mistakes i told you know many many time i sometimes when i went for my communication i love communication so when i went for my communication my heart was saying my goodness of all the people you are going to specialize in communication because you have been such a failure in communication i tell you god takes such failures and such weak people and use them but not for ourselves only use them for others okay these are the three things laminate your communication how to laminate your communication load your head and your heart the two hs with excellent things and learn from your mistakes and learn from the successful people have you seen the successful amazing people they don't, don't talk too much they know when to talk when not to talk i asked one person great friend of mine amazing person big businessman he told me i learned from my failures see we all learn from our failures so three l's let us remember laminate your communication load your head and heart with excellent things and learn from the mistakes and also learn from the success maybe from our success sometimes some days we would have controlled our tongue and spoken we would have been the master communicator that particular day learn from your success also we are also successful people the final l is the amazing l which i stand it separately let god help if god is not helping we cannot do anything that is what i have done i have learned in my life i have given hundreds of talks right like uh, today is teachers day and i all whenever i thought today i have prepared very well i am going to give an amazing presentation that is the very day i failed i've learned let god the strength what god has given it should be for his glory and he will use it let god help so let me pray with you with that same prayer what i pray every day lord god give me courage to speak when i need to speak to stay silent when i need to be silent give me the wisdom lord to discern these two and speak or not to speak at the appropriate time thank you in jesus name we pray amen ma'am i have a question <coughs> uh so um you mentioned that one of the times when we should keep silent which i totally agree is when you are angry or you are in a rage 
or you know in 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 the midst of some conflict but at that moment it's like if you uh, like practically speaking uh, if you keep quiet i mean if one keeps quiet won't that do a little harm on like ourselves uh, you are right it will harm ourselves that is why we must train ourselves when you are not talk when if in case if you are going to talk during that time when you are emotionally disturbed when you talk the after effect will be greater than when you don't talk it will affect if you don't talk also it will affect if you talk also if you, it will affect you both ways when you compare and see this is greater because what will happen the other person will talk then it is difficult to control see when we start one sentence when we know our value is being degraded sometimes not our value our parents out of experience right our parents or our friends see these people know where to touch you sometimes when they talk ill about you they we will be quiet when they talk ill about your mother if you are she is you are very close to her you cannot be quiet so it is better you are not accepting the times like when they are talking about your for example like your parents if you are talking if you are not talking it is harming you but that is comparatively lesser but as the days go by you will learn you know even that ha- harm will be minimized but you need to train see this thing whatever i told you i am practicing from 18 years and even today i am honestly i am telling if i have known when to speak when not to speak when if at all i followed it in my life it would have been a better life according to my understanding but it takes time but you will master it you will master it and you will be very proud that you have mastered it you will be very proud and start with a simple thing don't make big big decision start mm-hmm. with a simple and easy way then you will be proud okay today i kept silent at least for once so that is why i train my children no 6 to 8 nobody should, should talk at least they will get into that habit of being silent yes ma'am that was going to be my next question like uh, my, nice question uh, <laughs> no like um, in today's world the children they don't think before talking they mm. don't think that even when they back answer the parents like even including my son he's not a bad child but you know things like um oh you don't have time to spend with me or you know you know they just speak without thinking and then when i get into the uh, discussion it's like um, no i didn't mean that i didn't mean that sorry but then it comes out so how to like see now could you ask me a question ma this was such a short time what communication i teach in phd level for 3 years i told see this child and parent and child you cannot uh, um, bring silence there too much this is husband and wife that your level you know at least teenagers you can bring child no he may not know what it is one day i was cutting onions my daughter came and she was talking to me i replied everything she got upset with me now she is a big girl she has two children and she got very upset with me i told her why, why are you getting upset i am listening to you i am answering you whatever you no you are not listening to me with your eyes have you heard this one <laughs> so what they want is we must stop every you are cutting onions and you are talking i don't want i want your 100% attention children are children ma that is the child psychology you know right mm-hmm. teenagers you must give full attention the more you talk to them see there will be one stage we are going out of subject there will be one stage you want to talk to them they will not talk to you Okay. i have six grandchildren my first granddaughter is 19 years we long to there is certain age when they will come and talk to you that is the age we must grasp then after sometimes you will long 
Oh, will they come and talk to you? No, they won't come and talk to you. Afterwards, they will change. So this particular thing, it will not be applicable for parent and child relationship. Could you ask me that question? Because if the age is very small, teenagers, it will work. You yeah. meet in silence with a teenager, it means so much. They will not repeat the mistake again. They know my mother. I worked, uh, I used to do. That is the punishment. If my children, I have two daughters, they studied in Bishop Cottons, you know, nowadays it is worse. Those days also it was worse. Okay, I will never talk. I told, I told you two, three times, you are not listening. You will get the consequences. Just one day, two days, they will learn. But not with children. Children, no, no, no. children entering, entering his teens. <laughs> entering his teens is the most difficult age. You will get confused. Try the error or uh, this method. Both methods you must keep trying because each individual is different. Treat them as your friend. That is the best thing. That time they won't realize, but when they become parents, they tell, my goodness, how on earth you manage so well, Ma, I have never seen a mother. But that will not come during this time. Don't expect that now. Yes, it will come when they become parents. Till that time you must wait. <laughs> yes, ma'am. Thank you, ma'am. Investment, you. investment ma'am. Yes, ma Whatever time you are spending with your children is your investment. Yes, uh, I have a one question which I am going through now with my friend, especially in the prayer and the Bible studies, okay? Always her words, what she speak to me, it will hurt me so much the way she speak to me. Should I tell her, please don't speak this type of word which it is hurting me or should I correct or should I be silent? It will put me down. It gives me tears in my eyes. Okay, the way she speak, it's like broken. I'll break. I totally, I'll broke off. Emma, these are the three things you remember: what to say, uh, how to say, when to say. These are the three answers for our relationship. What to say is truth. You have to tell her. If that is hurting you, you have to tell her. But how to tell and when to tell is very important. Don't change the truth. If it is hurting you, she may not mean it. Put it in a nice way. Talk to her when she is little flexible, when she is little calm. Each person is different. Ma. When she is your friend, you know. Mm. Right? So choose a correct time. Tell her, see, I want to share something with you. I value your friendship because she is your friend, right? I value yeah. our friendship. It is so nice we are talking together. But I would like to talk to you something. Are you ready to listen? Many he, she may also realize even before you tell, she will tell you, oh, did I hurt you? <laughs> so what to say? You have to speak up. Speak mm. the truth. See, this truth and love, it is not quote, it is, if you quote the truth with love, it is wrong. Love and truth should be integrated. You see in the life of Jesus, he knew when to talk. He was silent many times, right? Yes. Yeah. So you, we can, we can talk. Thanks. And do it prayerfully, ma'am. I'll pray for you also, Sharmila. Thank you so much. Yeah. Any book you would like to recommend uh, for communication skills? Lata, this communication, uh -huh. Vigo Sugard's book is, the, I am trained by Dr. Vigo Sugard at Thailand. It started in 92. But uh, all this, whatever I've spoken, I would have referred around 100 to 100 books, but I can give you, but most of them are secular books. And also um, my own experience, Lata. Dr. Ken wants to write a book on communication. I, you are there, no? In Acts thing, I teach communication there and SABC. 
yeah. and all the notes what i have if you have any doubts you know communication is such a vast subject we teach it for 3 years so whatever you want to know like one question she asked about the mother and child relationship this will not fit in there so we can send it to you precious heavenly father thank you for this wonderful session and lord bible says that you are a speaking god and unless we keep quiet we cannot hear your voice unless we put everything down and remove every noise in the channel we cannot hear the sender voice lord jesus let us be so clear uh, in our mind and thoughts and let our ears be so sensitive to your voice that we will learn and apply every communication to listen to you first and then to apply it in our lives thank you daddy for giving making renu kaka to speak and bless her richly in everything and bless her anoint her and use her more in the wonderful and mighty name of jesus i pray amen